All right, Mark Rogers TV running down the best players in college football heading into 2014. We've looked at the quarterbacks and the running backs. We make our way to the wide receivers, the glamour boys, the guys that like the spotlight and the attention. And we had a great group going to the NFL draft. Keep this in mind. 18 juniors opted early for the NFL draft in May, including the eight top receivers in yardage from 2013. So elite receivers all over the country going to the NFL. My personal favorite just to watch, Mike Evans of Texas A&M. You had the two guys at LSU, Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry. Two really good ones out of the Big Ten. And Jared Aberderis at Wisconsin and Allen Robinson of Penn State. The Beast out of Clemson. Uh, Sammy Watkins and, of course, Marquise Lee, even though he didn't put up the big numbers with a new quarterback at USC in 2013, Marquise Lee, an elite talent. So we go with the best of the rest with all those guys moving on to the NFL. This may not be an impressive list, but we know that wide receivers are going to make plays in college football this season. So, again, this is not necessarily a projection for the NFL. It's not. It's not a statistical comparison. For example, Amari Cooper, we consider him an elite receiver. Is he going to catch 100 balls for 1,500 yards and 20 touchdowns? No, not in that offense. So we took everything into consideration, and um, we came up with this 10. So tell us where we missed it and who needs to be on the list when we get done. Need to hear from you as well. Okay, at number one out of Florida State, we've got Rashad Green. Big national championship game versus Auburn. Nine catches, 147 yards, including the big one on the final drive from Jameis Winston on the slant pattern for 55 or 60 yards to get the Florida State Seminoles in scoring range to win the BCS championship. Rashad Green for the season caught 76 for 1,128 yards and nine touchdowns. He's not a huge freakish talent. He's not a big guy. He's got decent size. Very good speed, not elite top end speed, but very good speed. But he catches the football. He doesn't drop footballs. He runs routes very well. He knows the passing game. He has been playing at Florida State his entire career, starting for a long time. He's very, very polished. Polished receiver, not with a high ceiling, but he's right now the most secure pick for number one in college football. That's Rashad Green out of Florida State. Similarly, we've got a guy similar to that in Tyler Lockett out of Kansas State at number two. Lockett caught 81 last season in an offense that did not have an elite quarterback. 1,262 yards and 11 touchdowns for Lockett. He finished off the campaign in style against Michigan in the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl. Three touchdown receptions there and against Oklahoma had a monster game. 12 catches, 278 yards and three touchdowns. Tyler Lockett again. First team all Big 12 selection, as Green was, first team all conference in the ACC. Lockett does everything well. Again, think of a guy with good size, not freakishly big like Sammy Watkins, but good size, very good speed, breaks out of his breaks and runs very good patterns, knows how to run the patterns, get open, make the catch. He's very dependable. Tyler Lockett's at number two. Now we go to a guy who had a huge freshman season and took a bit of a downer in 2013 in Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper of Alabama splashed onto the scene with 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns as Bama won the national championship in 2012. Last season got off to an extremely slow start, only had nine catches after five games, mostly due to an ankle injury. Also, there were some questions about him feeling a bit entitled after the breakout year as a freshman. He got his commitment back into focus and performed well down the stretch for the Tide. Amari Cooper finished with 45 catches for almost 800 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, Again, nine catches in the first five games, finished well down the stretch. Uh, Really hit up uh, Auburn and Oklahoma for big games with 178 yards against the Tigers and 121 against Oklahoma. Injury problems in 2013 now behind him. Amari Cooper looking to have a bounce back year for the Tide in 2014. At number four, we go to Pitt and the ACC, and this kid is really exceptional. As a freshman, Tyler Boyd of Pitt, second team all ACC, 85 receptions, 1174 yards, seven touchdowns, huge game in the bowl game against Bowling Green, eight catches for a buck 73. This guy has it all. He's got size, top end speed. He explodes off the line of scrimmage. 
He really gets off the line of scrimmage, and he breaks in and out of cuts very well. He's pretty polished for being a guy that just played his freshman season at Pitt. Look out for Tyler Boyd. He's an exceptional player, second team all ACC, and again, we expect him to explode going from that freshman season and improving that ceiling, that ceiling coming into play going into a sophomore season at Pitt. Tyler Boyd out of Pitt at number four. At number five, we've got DGB, Doriel Green Beckham out of Missouri. He is a freakish athlete. He's kind of the new school wide receiver that we've seen in college football over the past five to ten years come into prominence. Doriel Green Beckham will not beat most guys down the field, but he boxes them out with that huge frame. He's like 6'4", 6'5", broad shoulders, high points the football, boxes guys out, has extremely tough, strong hands, and catches the football in traffic, out muscles the defenders in those battles for the ball. Uh, Beckham caught 59 for 883 yards and 12 touchdowns. And he was huge in the SEC championship game against Auburn. Six for a buck 44 and two touchdowns. Doriel Green Beckham Jr. coming out of his sophomore season. Going to be a junior, so he's got some growth there as well. And very much needs to grow off the field. He's immature, has had some misconduct issues, severe stuff at Missouri. But strictly looking at the talent and the production, DGB, our fifth best receiver in college football. We move on to number six, and we go to an unexpected place, at least going into 2013. We go to the ACC, and a first-teamer here, Jamison Crowder of Duke. Listen to these numbers. 108 receptions, 1,360 yards, and eight touchdowns. He caught 76 in 2012 and uh, against Texas A&M as Duke almost pulled off the big 12-point upset. He caught 12 passes for a buck 63. Jamison Crowder is not a huge NFL prospect. His speed's a bit limited, his size severely limited, but again, production, uh, production, production out of Jamison Crowder. So he makes his way going into his senior season in the sixth position out of Duke after his 108 catch season in 2013. Okay, at number seven, we've got Antoine Goodley of Baylor. He caught 71 for 1339 and 13 touchdowns. He's got his quarterback. Bryce Petty coming back in 2014. So we like Antoine Goodley going into his senior season to have another good one for Baylor. We wish the Bears would play a quality non-conference opponent. So we're going to have to wait six or seven weeks to see Goodley play against elite corners and safety guys uh, against the Baylor Bears. But uh, again, he's a good one. Goodley uh, from Baylor at number seven. Okay, we go to number eight and a wide receiver who didn't produce big numbers in 2013, but we expect him and his quarterback to step up their play heading into this fall, and that's Nelson Aguilar of USC. Aguilar caught 56 for almost 1,000 yards, so good production yards per catch, six touchdowns. Remember, Cody Kessler was coming off uh, a battle for the job with Max Wittek, won the job in the second or third game of the season after splitting time the first couple of weeks. That hurt Aguilar's production as a sophomore. Aguilar has elite speed, run after the catch ability. He is a first round talent. Again, we're not judging or evaluating him based on that right now, but we think that type of talent is going to translate into big numbers, big production, and most notably, again, the catches that matter at USC this season as the Trojans try to make it to the Pac-12 championship game. Nelson Aguilar of USC coming in at number eight. He's got, again, exceptional hands, speed, and breakaway ability out of the tackle. At number nine, we go to Laquan Treadwell, who I'm interested to see uh, coming out of his freshman season in which he was all freshman All-America Uh, There at Ole Miss, caught 72 passes. Can't find his stats here. There we go for 608 yards. So do the math there. He only uh, averaged about nine yards per catch. He did most of the underneath work for Ole Miss, which is really interesting for a freshman to to find the coverage, post up, make those kind of catches, sometimes out of the slot for Ole Miss, and five touchdown receptions. He was the SEC freshman of the year and really stole the show from game one, week one, against Vanderbilt on national TV. So Laquan Treadwell, in the absence of Dante Moncrief, another 
excellent college football player moving on to the NFL is going to have to pick up his game and be counted on to get downfield. So we are going to see Laquan Treadwell be counted upon for bigger plays out of that Ole Miss uh, passing offense. But keep in mind, that might be not exactly his game. He's a big guy. Even though he's only a freshman, 6'3", 215, coming out of his freshman season, he's got like mitts, paws. He can catch the football in space and out of the air. He plucks it out of the air, but not elite speed from Treadwell. Not elite speed, decent speed. He's a long strider. He's got kind of Michael Irvin type length uh, striding downfield. So we've got Laquan Treadwell going into his sophomore season out of Ole Miss at number nine. And finally, out of the Pac-12, we've got Ty Montgomery out of Stanford. He produced very well for a rushing attack offense there. 61 catches for almost 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. And who could forget the play he made against UCLA? Uh, one of the catches of the year, if you have not seen it. If you have not seen it, you've got to go to YouTube and look up Ty Montgomery's catch for Stanford. So again, Montgomery with a big season, uh, almost 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. And as uh, the Stanford passing game progresses, uh, the quarterback gets better. Uh, Kevin Gogan, we expect uh, Ty Montgomery to factor in largely for the Cardinal in trying to make a repeat run to the Pac-12 championship game. In the comments below, we will list our honorable mentions. So we missed a bunch of guys here. We know you're prob probably clamoring for some of them, like Jalen Strong out of Arizona State or Justin Hardy out of East Carolina, who caught 114 passes last season, or Devontae Davis, San Diego State, Braylon Addison, a fine receiver out of Oregon, and so many more guys. But here is the big board. Let's run them down one more time. Rashad Green of Florida State at number one. We've got Tyler Lockett, Kansas State at number two. Amari Cooper, Alabama, number three. Uh, Boyd at number four. DGB at number five, the Mizzou Tigers. Number six, Jamison Crowder, all ACC out of Duke. Antoine Goodley, number seven out of Baylor. Nelson Aguilar, a bit of a wild card pick for us out of USC in the eighth spot. Laquan Treadwell, the all-freshman out of the SEC at number nine. And Ty Montgomery out of Stanford comes in at number 10. Now, this only works because we now hear from you. Your best wide receivers in college football. We listed our top 10. Now we would like to hear from you right here on Mark Rogers TV.